and I am the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. When I first saw Pulp Fiction, I was so thoroughly stitched into its world that I remember being bewildered when the credits rolled and I once again realized that I was a person watching images on a movie screen. Suture is the film theory term that refers to that transcendent feeling of being so completely immersed in a story that you forget you are a viewer. Suture is the high we are chasing when we watch a movie hoping to be swept away, when we pick up a book hoping to be lost in it for hours. This is not a video about how to achieve suture. That's a topic for an entire book. This is a video for how stories break suture. Hold it, hold it. What is this? Which I actually think is more instructive. Hi, I'm Jonathan Stokes, and this is Raising the Stakes, videos about story. Let's get into it. Breaking Suture is anything that bumps you out of the story, reminding you that you are an audience member. It could be bad acting. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Or lousy special effects. Or a really weird prop choice. Or anytime you see a fake 555 number in a movie. How do you like them, Max? Or it could be the director breaking the fourth wall. But as a writer, I have to admit that I think the most common cause for breaking suture is in the writing. Maybe it's an unbelievable plot point, like the Fonz jumping the shark. Maybe it's an unbelievable character choice, like Daenerys turning evil. Maybe the writer-director is deciding to insert anti-smoking messages into their sci-fi universe. You wanna buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. Maybe it's a movie violating its own rules. Like, in The Phantom Menace, when attacked by gas, the Jedi are forced to hold their breath. Then, a few scenes later, when they need to breathe underwater, they just casually pull out breathing devices. This may seem like a petty example, but either we live in a world where these guys have breathing devices in their pockets or we don't. The movie can't have it both ways. Okay, I'll attempt a better example. Battlestar Galactica was one of my favorite shows. By its own rules, the show took place before humans populated Earth. So in the season three finale, why did all the Cylons start singing All Along the Watchtower by Bob Dylan? You hear that song? Yeah. To this day, there are subreddit discussions on whether or not Bob Dylan is a Cylon. Okay, quick pause. Ron Moore is a genius, full stop. Suture is really tricky and really subjective. I don't want to sound like I'm dissing other writers, let alone one of my favorite writers. Okay, play. So suture is broken anytime a story makes you scratch your head too hard, or reminds you that what you're seeing isn't real. Writer and director David Mamet, for instance, believes that any depiction of graphic sex or violence in a movie is a bump, as audiences will immediately be thinking about the fact that what they're seeing is fake. Shit! Yes! Oh no, he died! David Mamet's taking a hard line here. But I do notice that whenever an actor dies on screen, I find myself staring at their eyes, looking to see if they twitch, or just do something odd. Huh. So if stories need to maintain perfect tonal consistency, perfect logical consistency, perfect narrative distance, or they risk breaking suture, how do we achieve that level of perfection? There must be an analyst at Netflix who can tell you the exact minute people turn off a TV show or movie. I wish there was a way they could share that data with storytellers so we can all study it and learn what broke the spell of suture, and together we can make this a little bit more of a science. Until then, the next time you put down a book or change the channel, just think about why. What did the storyteller do that pissed you off? that broke your suspension of disbelief and pulled you back to reality. I'm Jonathan Stokes, and you are a person watching a video.